August 2nd, 2021, four of us set out to complete the John Muir Trail, uh, which is a hiking trail in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California. So me, Dan, Jamie, um, and Bree all set out to go northbound, started at Horseshoe Meadows, which is near the town of Lone Pine. Uh, you have to drive about 6,000 miles, 6,000 miles, 6,000 feet up to get there. Um, our permit was for Cottonwood Pass, and we ended in Yosemite National Park. The trail didn't officially start until basically the Whitney, Mount Whitney point, um, so day three, day four, uh, but it's just easier to get a permit out of Horseshoe Meadows and Cottonwood Pass. So this is the next 17 days. Say hi. We made it to Oceanside. Tomorrow we head to Lone Pine, and then the next day we start our hike. Oh. Hello from Horseshoe Meadows. Say hi guys. It's a good day. It's a good night. It's only 7.30. We are at the trailhead. Almost 11,000 feet. 10.5. Yep. And then Horseshoe Meadows. We had a long day in the car and driving this morning, so we haven't really slept. Nope. But uh, if we go to bed now, we'll have 10 hours of sleep, 10 and a half hours of sleep, so we can wake up and start hiking so day zero is over now, and day one starts tomorrow. Not day one of the JMT, just day one. Day one. This is it. We're maybe four miles in. We're still trying to get up to Chicken Spring Lake in Cottonwood Pass and on to Rock Creek. Bit of a slog, not used to the altitude, but uh, all things considered, pretty amazing. No clouds. Down there in the meadow is where we came from. And I think we're going up about a thousand feet today. Hi. First try. We are on our way. Inyo. We're in Inyo National Forest. We are officially on the PCT right now. Not the JMT, but the PCT. We made it to Rock Creek. Oh, what, 13.5 miles? Yep. From where we started this morning? Yeah. Hey, buddy. We got a family of deer behind us. Yeah. They might come visit. <laughs> probably not. Not a bad little spot. So we're gonna make dinner and then probably go to bed early and then wake up really early and walk to Crabtree to get a good spot. And then we can just chill for the day, which will be nice. I think we're all a bit sore, so the sleep will do us well. Pound some Advil. Call it a day. Yep. So we made it to day two. We are probably halfway between Rock Creek and Crabtree. Didn't film this morning, it was pretty brutal. Uh, this is also pretty brutal. Whew. We let the rest of our group go ahead of us from camp this morning just to get there early. Luckily, it's a short day. Only seven miles. We're maybe three, four in. Four I don't know. I have no idea. We 
We've now made it to the end of day two. It's only about four o'clock, but we left at seven this morning. It took seven hours to hike seven miles. It was, it was pretty rough. I feel like nobody ever talks about how bad the trail is between Rock Creek and Crabtree. Anyways, we're set up now, gonna go to bed early. The plan is to hit Whitney in the morning and leave at three o'clock. We'll see how that goes. It is day three, uh, 3 a.m., maybe just after. We are going to Mount Whitney. At least that's the plan. Got up at two o'clock. One guy got up at one o'clock. Get it to Guitar Lake. Uh, I don't know what time it is. Look at all these people, all these headlamps. Everyone's going to climb Whitney. Which is more people up there. Whitney is up there, I think. No pooping allowed from this point on. Unless it's in a baggie that you carry down. Look at this view. There's Whitney up there. There's a lot of people around. Uh, we saw a mountain lion. So that seems to be a theme of all of our trips. Catching it in the dark with our headlamp. So we shortcutted the switch back and gave it space, but man, Nothing like a jolt of adrenaline in the morning when you already have PTSD for mountain lions, so... We just caught up with our friend from our last camp who got up at 1 in the morning to hike this. Uh, got this far, basically got lost at Guitar Lake, ended up going around the lake, off the trail. Oh, what a mess, in the dark, so he's just giving up and going back to camp. So we made it to Mount Whitney, 14,500 and something feet. It took six hours, seven hours, I don't know. But we made it. Feeling pretty good. No symptoms of altitude sickness. Only crappy thing is, I'm the only buddy, I'm the only one here. We are coming down. From the summit of Whitney. So low, but that's okay. Day three, as you saw, was summiting Whitney. It's about 15 mile round trip um, straight up from camp. And I think camp at Crabtree was in the 10,000 range, and Whitney is 14, five, 14,500 and something. The switchbacks were hard and plentiful, but they were. They were beautiful and easy to manage. You just had to stop and take a few breaks. Uh, the way back was really, really hot. You're really exposed, especially down until a guitar lake, till you start dropping back into the tree line again.
End of day four, we made it to Tyndall Creek before noon. Pretty easy day, all things considered, so we have the rest of the day to kind of chill. Found this awesome creek. Well, we didn't find it. We're staying at Tyndall Creek, so obviously. Gonna go hang in the water for a bit. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's warm. Over there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Backcountry bath. Apparently, when we, when we go up over this, it's like a kind of like a <coughs> looks like a like an alien type of surrounding. Uh, another early morning, we woke up at 3, started hiking at 4, it's about 5.30 now. We are going up Forester Pass. Our goal is to beat the sun as it is every day and waking up early. A lot earlier than I thought we were going to have to wake up, but man, the second that the sun hits you at about 9am, it's unbearable. All you want to do is get out of the sun. So we've been hiking more in the dark where we can. Uh, yeah, I think we're a couple miles from the top. I think we have to go up somewhere there. Not really sure. Or over there, who knows. Look at this area, it's so pretty. So we just saw a guy go through the pass. It's a tiny little gap between the two ridges that stick up. It's the one on the left that's got the little black shadow. That's that's our point for today. Hopefully it takes a couple hours. Ugh, nothing more. Today is the end of day five. We made it. It was a really long day. Um, 15 miles. We did Forester Pass um, and basically a long descent all the way until the very end. Now we're staying at Charlotte Lake. We started hiking at about 4 a.m. We got here at about 5 p.m. Um, really long day. Uh, our bodies are starting to feel pretty good, but we all sort of have little issues happening. Um, Dan has issues with altitude and coughing. Uh, Bree just isn't used to backpacking so much. Jamie, um, it's mostly just the weight on the shoulders. Uh, and for the first time in my life, I have knee problems. I'm totally fine with everything except that my knees start to hurt, which I don't understand, but it is what it is. Uh, Jamie has some really good ointment that's got CBD in it. So I've been putting that on at night and that's been really helping. Um, our lips are all really chapped because it's so dry up here. Yeah, It's about 7.30. Uh, I think from now on we're going to start waking up early. So another 4 a.m. start tomorrow. Wake up at 3. We have 17 miles a little bit further and I think our miles only increase from here. So we die. Morning. We have made it to morning 6. As you can see down there is where we camped last night, Charlotte Lake. It's about
about six o'clock right now. We've been hiking for an hour. Our alarms didn't go off at three, so we woke up at four. And we're on our way now to Glen Pass, which should be a couple of miles up. And then dropping down into Ray Lakes. Glen Pass is brutal. This is so much harder than Forrester yesterday. Even though it was only two miles. But almost there. The sun is just peeking up. Oh, my tummy's grumbling. The other side of Glen now and I feel like there might be a wildfire nearby so you can smell the smoke a little bit in the air and over this way is really hazy today I actually messed up the mileage I thought we had 19 we only had 11 we are here at suspension bridge it is beautiful we did Glen Pass this morning which was much harder than Forrester yesterday and tomorrow we have Pincho and from here on out we have at least 18 miles every day apparently this is a heavy bear activity little camp area so Hopefully we don't deal with those tonight, but absolutely beautiful, really good day. We're all feeling good. We also had a trail angel give us three uh, dehydrated meals tonight, so we are eating well tonight, which means we don't have to have mashed potatoes or rice for dinner or trail mix, so that's good. Um, yeah, that's it for tonight. Welcome to day seven. Oh boy, everyone says you usually have your trail legs by now. I don't think I do. I don't think I'm going to have trail legs. Actually, I feel fine except for my knees and my hip and my ankle. Other than that, I'm good. Uh, it's about 7.30, I think, 7, 7.30. Started walking at 4 o'clock to get to Pincho Pass. So far it has been uphill the whole way. I think we've gone maybe four, four miles, four and a half miles. Uh, we lose Bree today. She's got to go back to work. So second half of the trail will be just the three of us. where the pass is. I'm going to assume by the direction people are walking it's over there. 
or up there, maybe up there. Maybe this is Mount Pincho. Beautiful, beautiful. Definitely a smoky day, but holy moly, it's beautiful. Wow, yeah, you too. Yeah, cool. What a long morning. Did you start at Wood Spike or Wood Creek? We like started at Suspension down? Bridge. Yeah. Okay. Down. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's not bad at all. Okay. That's the probably the smarter way to do it. Oh. <laughs> There's a smarter <laughs> way out here. I don't know. This sweet little spot four miles from Mather Pass uh, with amazing water. So we are gonna camp here for the night. Bye. Hi. Yeah. And it's breeze last night with us. It's a beautiful sight though. We did 13 miles today. Eight miles up Pincho Pass, which is probably the prettiest pass. Um, and then maybe three, four, five miles down. Um, and then my knees started acting up really bad and we just didn't want to risk getting stuck up high in the middle of the day when it's sunny. So we stopped and we'll pick it up again tomorrow. We have made it to day eight officially halfway through our days here on the JMT, although we have not done half the miles yet. Uh, it's about 6.30. We are on our way to Mather Pass. Um, I think we have about a thousand feet of elevation left. Maybe take us an hour or two to get up there. I'm not sure if it's a mile or two away, maybe two miles. Uh, had a good night last night. I don't actually know where we stayed. I'll have to figure that out on the map. But, uh, oh, we went the wrong way. There we go, because we're talking. Um, yeah, but it was beautiful. Freezing, but beautiful. My knee has been super messed up on the downhills. Uh, even Advil's not really working anymore, so I think it's probably these shoes it's affecting my arch which is affecting my knee it also affects my hip sometimes uh, but we're living with it for now halfway through should be able to make it Now hiking down 
the Palisades. It is 5 p.m. day eight. We are still walking. We started walking at 4 a.m. It's now 5 p.m. Uh, just heading up to LeConte, Bishop Junction, where we will call it a night. Mere Pass is about eight miles from that camp so if we feel up to it we may push a mile or two closer don't know if i'll film again at camp depends how tired we are and how much time we have clouds are rolling in which is a first for this trip really and the winds have been picking up so hopefully it doesn't rain may rain probably not but the shade is nice I've made it to day nine, seven o'clock, been hiking since four, uh, up alongside this waterfall pretty much the whole time. I think it was dark most of the time, couldn't see. Uh, we are on our way to Mir Pass, which uh, has a pretty long approach as far as I know. We made it, 10.09. Whew, to the Mere Hut, Mere Pass. What an epic climb. We are down at Sapphire Lakes. I totally forgot to film it. We stopped for lunch at this lake, went in, washed my hair for the first time in nine days. 
Not sure it's clean, but washed it anyway. We are still heading down from Muir Pass, I guess, through all these little lakes and then hopefully ending up in the McClure Meadows. Uh, maybe five or so miles. It's two o'clock right now, so hopefully we can get there by five. Good morning from day 10. It is August 11th. It is about 5.30 in the morning and we just had to cross Evolution Creek. When we started it was dark, when we got to the other side it was light. About 10 minutes. Stayed in a really nice campsite last night in McClure Meadow. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. Had a good sleep but I don't know, I think uh, not getting a full eight hours is starting to catch up with us. We're all a little bit sore. But today is resupply day. So we are on our way to MTR right now. We had 12 miles to get there. We've probably done, I don't know, three or four. Making good time since we don't have any passes today and it's relatively flat so far. o'clock a.m. Here's a fun trail update. Uh, so eight o'clock we got to a junction said Goddard Canyon and Florence Lake 16 miles. So look at our map both north and south of us are Goddard Canyon. No Florence Lake. Not on that page of the map. So we go down Goddard after about two and a half miles, check the map, realize we have gone in the wrong direction. So now we were on the proper trail back, so we wasted a couple of hours uh, and six miles. Why wouldn't you put something like the next section, like Aspen Meadows, where we're at? Why wouldn't you put that on the trail marker? Why would you put Florence Lake? Anyways, as we were leaving the junction to go the right way. There was an elderly couple and they were also stumped about which way they were supposed to go. So I'm assuming this happens all the time because technically Goddard Canyon is the very start, maybe the first mile of the section that we want to take. So <sighs> when you're in a rocky area and it's just a pile of, a pile of round, smooth, stones and that's your trail and you stand on them and they're slippery and there's no footing. Apparently those smooth round stones are called baby heads. Baby heads. Someone on the trail told us that. All I think is that we're walking on baby heads. It's real weird but uh, kind of cool to learn different things about trails. all want a side hustle. Apparently huge pine cones. If you sell a box of these on eBay, a big box, they go for hundreds of dollars. People want them for Christmas decorations. So there you go. If you're need, needing a little extra moolah and you live in an area with nice big fat pine cones like these guys, not a bad deal. First little bit of thunder all trip. <laughs> so today is day 11. It is nine o'clock in the morning. It's been about 24 hours since I last videoed. Uh, last 24 hours have been a bit of a disaster, <sighs> but uh, got a resupply yesterday at MTR, 
and uh, it was getting late and the weather was bad. So once Jamie pulled in, we decided to just stay there for the night. They have a nice campground, it was busy, but uh, got everything sorted out just before the rain started. Rained and stormed only for probably less than an hour, nothing bad. Uh, originally had intended to hike four miles out of MTR last night. That didn't happen, so we did it this morning. Holy moly. Not at one point of this trip have I questioned myself until that climb out. I think it was about 2,200 feet straight up first thing in the morning, and I just broke down. Man, never really been that defeated since our first year backpacking, but I just had a meltdown on the mountain. It's all good. We got lots of food, good food, different food, more than enough for the next however many days, six days, five days. And uh, we are on our way to Selden Pass right now, just a smaller pass. It's hot. I think we're all feeling it a bit this morning. We all woke up real tired, real drained, a little bit sore, so. But in a okay spirit, so we'll see where the day takes us. updates today um, oh, it was nuts I don't actually know how many miles we went uh, but we did the hike out of MTR this morning then we did Selden Pass I think I last had this on Selden Pass um, we actually ended up climbing another mountain and going up to Bear Ridge and then it started thunderstorming um, so we had to and we were hiking down anyway Anyway, it was a long day. We didn't finish until 7 o'clock, so we did 15 hours of hiking. Um, so we're at the bottom of Mono Creek now. The first night that we're actually camped by ourselves. We're going to sleep in tomorrow morning just because we were all feeling so beat today. So get up at 5 a.m. instead of 3 a.m., have a good breakfast, and then hope we all feel better tomorrow. We are on day 12. We slept in this morning till five o'clock. So seven o'clock start. We're gonna hike seven to seven, see how far we get. Next on our list today is Silver Pass, which is about almost four miles away. Not too bad. We patched ourselves up this morning, feel a little bit more human. Uh, our feet still hurt, but everything else is in pretty good shape. We're going up Silver Pass. And it just makes me think, we're on day 12, and a struggle, the struggle to get up these passes is definitely real. And while we were doing them, we were cursing them basically every day. But now we're on our second last pass, and I actually appreciate the routine of these passes, of getting up, hiking up, getting to the pass early, hiking down, and finishing up the day. I don't know. It's nice consistency. It's always beautiful up here on the passes. You're not deep down in the woods. Yeah, it's hot, but I think I might miss them a little bit. And we only have one left after this, which is Donahue, going to Yosemite a couple of days from now. Not that we won't climb things between now and then. I'm sure we'll go over plenty of mountains because we do plenty of that every day. Uh, but not the passes. There's something special about the passes. And each one is really unique. They're each special in their own way. Yeah, that's my thought. Might actually miss these passes. I'm gonna take a wild guess here and say that we are going up that saddle. These passes are not always predictable, but I can see Jamie halfway up. So, I feel like this is a pretty safe assumption. Get to the top of Silver Peak. 
week. Silver Pass. It's good up there. It's good up there. Let's go up there. which means it's probably going to rain in a few hours. So we're now at Virginia Lake, 430. I actually had a pretty great day. Uh, went over Silver Pass, had lots of energy afterwards, went downhill, had some lunch by a creek, just came up another 900 feet to get to the top of this mountain. We're at this lake here, we're going to go to Purple Lake and try to make it another three miles so that we're better situated for Red's Meadow tomorrow, where hopefully we can have a shower, pop into the restaurant, maybe do laundry. It's been cloudy all day, but not really rainy, which is actually pretty amazing. Because the sun just kills ya. Kills ya. Got burns in three places. My nose burnt, my wrist burnt, and my left inside of my knee burnt. Pretty disgusting, but this is what our feet look like after a day of hiking. This one shouldn't be too bad. Since I was wearing a gaiter. Oh no. My sock is stuck. No, not not nearly as bad. So well, that's what our feet look like. Oh, pretty amazing. That won't come off tonight. Nails are looking good. My nail clippers don't work, which is great. Good morning. We are on day 13. 6.43 a.m. It was another early morning. We didn't quite make it to Duck Pass yesterday. We stopped at Purple Lake. Uh, Jamie got his tent fixed. Somebody was nice enough to give him sort of a patch kit kind of deal. Uh, yeah, our 16 day trip is now going to be a 16 night trip. I think we're going to take an extra day, which we have on our permit, so that's fine. And I have the extra day before I have to get COVID test. So just because the long miles has been a little too much, we haven't been able to make as many miles a day as we need. Everybody's feet are hurting. Dan has a sprained ankle, so it's a bit slow going in some spots. Uh, but anyways, we're on our way to Red's Meadow. So we're hoping that this extra time gives us some downtime there. Have a good meal, maybe shower. I think I mentioned that already. Uh, yeah, we're hoping to get there by noon. Probably won't happen, but it's good to have a goal. We have 13 miles to go. I think we've done, well, 13 miles to get there. I think we've already done three maybe into our fourth now and uh, they have a camp right outside the area so we're gonna try to hustle and get a spot there if we can get there early because it's a Saturday apparently it gets really busy so yep on our way there other than sore feet sore ankles I think we're feeling pretty good we're all pretty excited about being able to shorten our mileage every day, at least by a few miles, just uh, by taking this extra day. I think it's going to help everybody. about half a mile to the junction for Reds. Holy moly, it's been a long day already. I haven't really stopped. 
for any breaks. Just been making a mad dash for this. I'm so jealous of how long you're still walking. I'm like waddling. Yeah, uh, today's my rest day. Small brown. All right, who wants to walk back to the campground? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let him be a Do I need to scare him off, guys? Yeah. I'll hit him with my GoPro. Yeah. Wow. Like, actually, though. Hey, we saw a bear finally. Finally. And it's going towards our camp. And it's... Oh, it sucks. <laughs> Red's Meadow Day. So it's a really small resort area that has cabins. Um, technically it's in Mammoth, Mammoth Lakes, California, uh, but it was right off the trail for us, so it makes for an easy stop for backpackers who do resupplies there. You can grab a shower. I had a 12 minute shower. It cost me $12, worth every penny. Uh, I got to sit down and scrub my feet for a solid five minutes, still didn't get the dirt off, but that's okay. It was better than when I came in. Um, grabbed lots of food. The restaurant wasn't open. Well, the cafe was open, but you couldn't eat inside. You just had to order and then uh, eat it outside. We just spent until seven o'clock at the picnic tables, eating, ordering more food, get her, getting more supplies. Uh, we bought, bought clean t-shirts to change into, which was probably the best purchase of the trip. Um, now we have a nice souvenir t-shirt. Um, and overall, just really, really great. We met a lot of really awesome people going both ways, northbound, southbound. Everybody had stories. Uh, this is where we hooked up with Stephen and Maxine. Um, we saw Emily and Caroline, spent a lot of time with them, some people that they knew. Uh, everyone's just really all around awesome. And the stories that you swap on trail, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a, such a good community um, overall. Dan got some some medicated gel for his ankles. Uh, people are just really, really nice. They give you whatever you need. So we spent way too much money there. We spent a lot of time there. Uh, saw a bear there. I always had three burgers. I had a grilled cheese and a potato salad and a hot dog and pie and ice cream and too much, but it was amazing. We met some really awesome people all going northbound, swapped stories. Our feet are mangled. I have like massive bruises on both ankles. Jamie's feet are so, both swollen. Uh, everybody's feet are just messed up. So it's good to know it's not just us. Yeah, he was right behind the bush here. Hey, hey bear. He's right here. Get here. Bear! Hey, go, go, go. Hey, go. There he goes. On day 14, we're just leaving Red's Meadow. It's about 6.20. We saw a bear this morning, which was pretty exciting. I think it was the same bear as last night. Uh, really smoky. Probably can't see it in the sky but we can smell it a lot and we can see it. Um, and yesterday when we were walking down we saw helicopters taking water so whatever fire that is is probably what this is. So the next morning we left Red's Meadow uh, hiked by the Devil's Post Pile. Don't really have any videos or pictures of that. Um, the air quality was really bad at this point and we woke up sort of questioning whether we should continue or stop. We got about a mile into the trail um, and we all stopped and used the data that we still had in the cell service on our phone to try to find reports of what was going on. Uh, the smoke was just really bad. It was starting to sting our eyes a little bit. Um, 
Jamie ended up with a headache most of the day. Uh, it was just visibly a lot worse than it had been. Um, but we crossed a couple of people. They said they hadn't seen any advisories. So we decided to keep hiking and just risk it. We didn't really want to cut the trip short at this point, so close to the end. Uh, we were on day 14, so we decided to tentatively keep going unless things got um, a lot worse, but luckily they did not. is gonna be home for tonight. Thousand Island Lake. Islands, Thousand Islands Lake. Thousand Island Lake. I don't know. This is where we're staying. 4.30, we made great time today since we slept in and we still went, ah, 17 miles or something. I think this is the first day on the whole trip that we actually overshot our mileage. So, uh, that feels good. Feels good. It took until the last three days of the trip to finally feel good enough to do it, but uh, better late than never. So we made it to Thousand Island Lake. Went in the water to clean up. Didn't even bother to set our tent up. And then this crazy windstorm came and we were trying to fortify everything so there's rocks on the outside of our vestibule to keep the sand out it was a mad dash it's been a crazy it's been a crazy hour it's been nuts beautiful out here. It's super, super, super pretty. Didn't have time to put shoes on from the water. Got scraped up. It's okay. There's a lot of people hunkered down hanging around. Some pretty bad weather. And Dan is the superhero who built a wall on both sides. Did you? Also, I washed my feet, but they're filthy again. Ooh, lightning! <laughs> oh, I can hear it. Damn! <laughs> Is it coming this way? I don't think so. I think it's, I think it's on the other side. Okay. Thousand Island Lake. Look at the sunrise. Obviously because of the smoke. It's another smoky day, but it's so pretty. So we're going over Island Pass in three miles. Donahue Pass in six miles. And then it is straight into the last leg of our trip. Yosemite National Park. the best time of the day without a doubt between 7 
an 8.30 maybe? 7 and 8, especially in this landscape. And the sun is just coming up. It's still cool, but it's getting warm. They're not cold anymore. Everything's peaceful, especially before a pass, when you're just out here in the open. I don't know, I really like this terrain. It's just so quiet. I have all my energy chews, my electrolytes, got a Snickers in my pocket, got Big Newtons, got Sour Patch Kids. We are snacked up for the morning. I'm talking about people that you meet on the trail. Everybody's awesome, but eventually you're bound to find people that are going the same way as you and roughly the same time. You end up leapfrogging them, seeing them at different camps, uh, sort of getting to know each other. It's really nice. The last few nights, we've uh, really formed sort of a group with some people that we met. Emily and Caroline, uh, they're from California. Met some other people at Reds too, Maxine and Steven, also from California. So by the time yesterday rolled around, we all camped at the same spot. So we're all going roughly the same mileage for the same days. And it was really nice. So after the weather cleared up last night, we all just kind of sat around on a rock, eating dinner and talking, sharing all of our woes, our foot injuries, talking about our favorite passes, what we like about the trail, what we don't like. And it's really cool to share that with a group of other people. Even though they're strangers, they kind of become a trail family. I'd be excited. It's the sending Donahue now. It's about 11.30. I don't know if the camera can capture the level of the smoke, especially in the valley there, but it's pretty intense. Where's the path? I don't know where the path is. I never know where the path is. made it to the border of Ptolemy Meadows. We're not allowed to camp within four miles, so we're outside of those four miles. Um, we had a really great night. There's a meadow nearby with a little river, so we went for a swim, cleaned our stuff, did our clothes, um, came back to camp. Uh, Steven and Maxine are here as well. We'll lose them tomorrow because we're gonna hike ahead but uh, it's really awesome company to have and then it turned out that Caroline and Emily were like a quarter mile away uh, so they came up and had dinner with us uh, tomorrow it's off to sunrise that is our last night on the JMT which is crazy it's been long but sometimes it doesn't seem that long the steer is still there oh we also heard a we saw a tree fall one of these dead trees literally snapped and fell 
in front of us while we were here. Very eventful day. And good night. It is the morning of day 16. Not a very eventful morning. It's about 8.30. We're just on our way to Ptolemy Meadows. Hopefully pick some stuff up at the store. And keep going to sunrise. Goodness, I think we've made it to the store. Yeah, I think that's the turn off we're taking. I remember we saw all of these, all the climbers getting ready here. Yep. It is almost 12.30. We are on our way up to Cathedral Pass, Cathedral Lakes. We'll probably stop and have lunch there and then head down to Sunrise. Our stop at Ptolemy was amazing. Oh my God, the grill was closed, it's closed for the season, which is too bad, but the store was open. And we, sp we spent like $75. Oh my God, food was so expensive. But we filled our bellies. I had some peaches, I had six mini uh, muffins, chicken salad sandwich, coffee, Pepsi, got a chicken salad sandwich for the road, apple for the road, backpacking meal for tonight. Dan ate a burrito, he ate a sandwich, he bought beef jerky, he bought all the meat. Man, it's hot. This sun is so hot. The smoke is totally cleared. The smoke that was really bad the last few days, totally gone. So I guess, I guess the wind shifted. Not a cloud in the sky, so I guess that weather system's over too. And it is a hot one. Forgot to mention, I also got a Kit Kat and a peppermint patty. I feel like I'd be remiss not to include those in my purchases. We found horses. Hi! This is our last night on the JMT. We are here at Sunrise in Yosemite, Sunrise Camp, where clearly there used to be something else going on here. There's a lot of old structures that seem to be torn down. James went to bed, just eating dinner. No water here, so it's a dry camp, but there's actually some stock horses just up the hill and a really friendly guy up there taking care of them who gave us some water from his hose, so that's great. Uh, we did 15 miles today and another 13 tomorrow morning. I think we're going to wake up at 4, make it 5, and hopefully make it up by 1 or 2. So it's 6.45 now. We're going to go to bed as soon as we're done dinner. That's the plan. It's a good day. Day 18, our last day. Sunrise, catching the sunrise at sunrise. The legs are getting tattered. Ugh. Ow. Okay. 
to Nevada Falls. We are four miles from the trailhead now. to Happy Isles. We made it to Happy Isles. Yeah. So I know the footage there ends pretty abruptly as soon as we get to Happy Isles. And Jamie's friend Andy came to pick us up. Thank goodness drove seven hours to come get us and seven hours to take us back to Oceanside. Um, all in really good spirits. So we are now a week out. Uh, had a lot of time to process and kind of just wanted to talk about, I guess some of the takeaways, some of the things I would have done differently or wouldn't have done differently. The biggest thing I didn't expect is probably the elevation change, which sounds really silly in retrospect because it's in the mountains. Um, but I kind of thought that apart from the passes, there wouldn't be much elevation change. I don't know why I thought that. Um, the whole thing was up and down the whole time. It was very, very rare that you would get any flat surfaces. And it's sort of funny to watch the footage back because everything looks flat on the GoPro. You can't really tell. Um, that there's a, any elevation, so it's kind of amusing to hear me huffing and puffing what looks like on a uh, straightaway. I think the only thing that I would change doing this again is taking more time. Um, so most people complete the trail in 21 to 28 days. We had originally planned 21 days, um, but just due to time constraints, we ended up with a 16-day itinerary. Um, and it was just, it was just a lot. I think 21 days would allow for a little more leisurely pace, uh, a little more time at campsites. You could walk a little bit more slowly, have time to you know, be in lakes or talk to people or just whatever you wanted to do. So I would take time to slow down, to look at the wildlife. There was a lot of, a lot of wildlife to be seen when you stopped. We even saw a deer chasing a baby wolf, a wolf pup. I can't explain it. I don't know the story behind that, um, but it was at a time we were just stopped for a few minutes. So yeah, the times that you can slow down and kind of take in what's around you were primo. So I wish we had had more than that. Um, so I wish we had had more time. The only other thing which is interesting was that before this trail, I had kept reading that a lot of people thought it was a life-changing trip. They had an aha moment where, you know, the puzzle pieces fell into place and their life changed. And so I kind of kept waiting for that moment. And because of that, I don't know, I left feeling a little bit disappointed, which I don't think is fair um, to myself. And in retrospect, um, I kind of realized that maybe I'm not the demographic for those aha moments. I mean, we've been backpacking for a while. I think we realized a long time ago that the lifestyle is transformative, that it is life-changing. Um, it does change you in little ways over time. 
and it's those challenges that promote growth and we've been lucky enough to have many of those over the years so if anything this trail you know kind of just affirmed that this is something well, at least for me that I love doing so it wasn't transformative so much as just affirming and reassuring and yeah it was hard but it's exactly kind of like what we're used to we knew it was going to be hard we knew it was going to be rewarding and it was all in all, an amazing trip, amazing views, amazing mountain passes. I didn't miss them at the time. I said I would never do the JMT again when we hiked out. Um, now that it's been a week, I think I would do it again if structured differently. I would love to go over the passes. Forrester was gorgeous. Pinchot was by far my favorite which I can't really explain. Um, Glen, Glen Pass can go F itself, basically is how I feel about that pass. Um, Donahue can, yeah, I have nothing nice to say about Donahue either, uh, possibly because it was at the end of the trail, so maybe I'm a bit biased, I know some people who liked it, but yeah, I recommend anybody looking for a challenge you don't have to have extensive backpacking experience. It doesn't matter how old you are. We met so many people on the trail in their 70s celebrating birthdays. Um, there was a 78 year old celebrating their birthday up there. You just, you do what you can. Take the time to enjoy it, get it done properly. Um, yeah, that's it.